So when it comes to homebrew rules, there's an absolute plethora of them that have been made over the decades of D&D's existence, and it can get pretty hard trying to find out which ones you like and which ones you don't. Not only just that, however, you also have to find which ones your players enjoy. Not every homebrew rule is universal. In some tables, they're fantastic and work really well, and in other tables, they absolutely hate them. It's your job as a DM to curate the homebrew rules to your party. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and go over five homebrew rules I use in my campaign that received a pretty good amount of feedback all across the board. Alright, so the first one is something that most DMs tend to agree with and I see a lot of people also use, and that's that drinking a potion should take a bonus action instead of the full action. With how long combat takes, I sometimes don't care to make my player spend 20 minutes sometimes just sitting there because they had to spend their action drinking a potion. It just feels really crappy and not fun. So yeah, bonus action to drink it, but if you want to administer it to someone, that is still a full action to do it. Another thing I do with potions as well is I don't make them roll for health as much as I just have a static number. And the stronger potion that you buy, the higher the number is. I feel like it's just a more reliable sense. Um, it also takes less time in the game for them to have to do more rolling. So I just have it, you know, drink a lesser potion, heals you for 10, greater 20, you know, etc, etc. Now, coming into my second rule might start to be a little bit of a controversial one, but I call it absolute 20s. When a player sees a 20 on the dice, I want them to know that that's a reason to celebrate. As such, if you get the natural 20 on the roll, I don't ask for modifiers or anything, you automatically succeed. Now, it doesn't mean that you break reality, but you do succeed to the highest extent that your character possibly could. Now, this isn't to cast stones at DMs that don't do this. This is just, for me personally, when I see a player roll a natural 20 and I hear the words coming from the DM that say, what are your modifiers? I see them sink down and feel disappointed, and for me, that's just not really something I like to see or, or have them feel. I want them to get a sense of excitement for a natural 20 and to jump out of their chair knowing, hey, the dice are in your favor. Now, for the third one, I created this sort of homebrew rule after I had a party where everybody was playing the same class, and they all realized very quickly they were doing the same thing. For this rule, it's a free feat at the universal ASIs that everybody gets. That's at 4, 8, 12, 16, and 19. Now, I understand that there can be some pretty powerful or broken builds that come off of this, but for me, it's something I'm willing to take that risk for the gift that it gives. I love seeing the creative choices that players take. Some people taking Linguist, some people taking Grappler, and it's just interesting to see the combinations that they come up with. I feel like it also helps players personalize their characters to the story and take feats that are more creatively drawn to the story rather than the gameplay. And for me, that's what I care about the most. Now for the fourth one. I'll be honest. If you get a natural 20, and then it's your time to roll damage and you get like a 2 or a 3, that is the worst feeling ever. That does not feel like a critical attack. So for crit systems, I've changed it that whenever a player gets a critical hit, the damage is different. When you score a critical hit, you are going to do the maximum possible damage that you can off that attack, plus whatever that you roll. This guarantees that there is a critical effect to a critical hit, rather than sometimes I see players get a natural 20 and they end up rolling lower than their second attack or what another player did. And it just does not feel like that was a natural 20. Putting the maximum possible damage at least guarantees that there's going to be quite the blow sent to the enemy or the target of whatever is getting hit. That being said, I understand that this system can work really, really well with paladins and barbarians, and I would give you that disclaimer right now because Brutal Critical and Smite can increase that potential number to pretty hardcore numbers. However, every homebrew rule has its risk to it, and everything you put can be abused to the player at some extent. I put my trust in them, and I put what I believe is more healthy for the game. Does it have some consequences? Absolutely but I'm willing to deal with that because I think the reward is better. 
And so keep that in mind when we get to my next point here, which is there is an optional thing that you could add to it as well if you want, which is something I devised called Crazy Crits. Now, what this is, it's a mechanic that causes consecutive critical strikes in the same fight to become deadlier and deadlier. Essentially, if a player in the same fight gets a second crit, that crit is going to be stronger than the previous one. And as such, with third, and then fourth and onward will have the same effect, but a quite powerful effect that is surely going to end the fight in some way or another. I know this can be a crazy amount of damage, but at the same time, if a player gets 4 natural 20s in one fight and can't win, then what else are they supposed to do? Sometimes brute force can be the answer if the rolls are in your favor. Depending on their level, however, characters with high enough health or even deities can stand strong after these crits and keep bashing them in, so it's not that they're ultimately going to win every fight, so keep that in mind too. I'll once again preface that this is an optional addition to my crit rule. I myself don't put it in every campaign. If I have a lot of players, I tend to leave it out. If I have a small amount of players, I tend to put it in. Now, when it comes to my final one that I want to showcase to you guys, DMs everywhere across the board have been trying to recreate inspiration to be something more rewarding or to be something more unique. The point is, this is just my system of redesigning it in that sense. Now, for me, I use what's called the marble system, which really can just be any object of your choosing. If you wanna do a deck of cards or if you wanna to do tokens, the physical object does not matter as much as the concept does. The players are aware of a list presented to them that details the effects of what the object does, or for the marbles. Now, I chose marbles because I like them to actually be an in-game lore as well that these characters actually physically get these marbles in their hand that are regarded as motes of possibilities granted to them by fate or any other deity of your choosing. And with that, whenever a player has an epic moment in combat, they've done something wicked or cool, or that they've done some amazing and immersive roleplay, I reward them with a marble of their choosing. The restriction is that they can't double up on the same color until they have all of them. That way they don't just keep choosing what they think is the best one. My intention isn't to have them min-max these choices, but give themselves better odds of not success, but prosperity. The idea is that if the players put their dedication and effort into their characters, then as a reward, they're more likely to get that character to level 20 and have things go their way. Using this system, I see players' faces smile when they're rewarded with this. It's like seeing a kid choosing what toy they want. It also sends a message to the other players. Roleplay your character correctly, be creative in combat, and you'll get these rewards too. And when the time comes for them to use the marbles, it creates those dramatic and epic moments. And is that not what we strive for as DMs? With that being said, that is it for today, guys. These are the five, but not all, homebrew rules that I use. In the future, I'll probably come out with more videos detailing other ones. Some of them might be very niche and specific to some situations, and others are kind of more just general and vague that you can kind of put in all campaigns. That being said, I hope you all have a fantastic day. I hope some of these rules are to your liking, and you can add them into your game. And with that, happy writing.